Hi, everyone. Welcome to the claimed podcast or whatever you're watching or, or, or listening to this. I'm Anna Rova. I help single successful women um, find and attract amazing men, which you can see the, the, the and you'll hear see the, some of them are not single anymore, but you know, the successful, there still are. And I want to welcome today my three beautiful guests, Shanna, Jeannie, and Nikki. I'm super excited to have you all here on board and thank you so much for being here and for, you know, um, being brave. I always call you women who come to the podcast as brave because this is, you know, this is not something that um, you talk about all day and and a kind of, you know, it requires some vulnerability and, and openness. So I'm really, um, yeah, really grateful that you're here. And as I said before, Shanna, you've been here with us before. You're the star in the Claim program, so welcome. And Jeannie and Nikki, you are new, uh, so this is exciting. Mm-hmm. So today we're going to talk about online oh. dating and what's <laughs> working today for you ladies and what have you seen working when you go out there and you know, attract, not only attract great men, but also communicate with them. And I'm, this conversation is all going to be about perhaps what, what you have been doing before claimed and what hasn't been working. And now that you've gone through the program, what's working for you today. So before we do that, let's quickly go around the, the room, go around the Zoom, go around the, this virtual room and introduce ourselves. And so, yeah, introduce yourself, tell us where you're from and, and why you're here. So we start, we'll start with Shanna. So I am Shanna Clay. I am from Salt Lake City, Utah. I've been a member of Claimed Program since September 2019. On to Claimed, I had struggled in dating, attracting um, quality men, honest men, good men who were who were truly ready and available for a relationship. And um, I felt like I kept encountering people who said one thing and then their actions did another. And as I um, began the work of Claimed Program, I started attracting men, not overnight. I mean, I definitely attracted plenty of increased men overnight, but the quality and the congruency of their behavior improved over time. It's as I grew, so did they. So that's, that's how I wound up here. All right. Awesome. I love that you said, as I grew, so did they. This is like the mantra for the claim program, (laughs) you know? So, all right, beautiful. Thank you, Shannon. Let's go to Jeannie. Jeannie, tell us a little bit about yourself and and why you're here. Hi, I'm Jeannie. I'm from the Philadelphia area. And um, I joined Claimed a little over a year ago. Um, My intention was to uh, try and kind of shift the dynamic in my marriage, but since we have separated, um, in fact, soon after I joined, uh, we decided to separate and I have been dating for about, um, six or seven months, um, in the program. And it's been very interesting, even in those six and six or seven months, just to see the shifts happening as I move further through the program, Um, see the men I'm attracting changing and, and the amount of investment that they're putting in changing as I sort of invest in myself in a deeper way, they invest in me in a deeper way. It's really, really cool to see. So I'm just on that journey. I'm still dating um, and I'm having a lot of fun. Mm, So beautiful. Thanks for sharing, Jenny. All right, Nikki, tell us all about yourself and why you're here. Yes. Uh, my name is Nikki Tyree. I live in Nashville, Tennessee, and I joined Claimed last August. Um, I just finished all the modules and I'm starting back over again because I definitely need to soak it in a little bit deeper. It's just there's so much good stuff there that I really wish I had known 20 years ago, and I think my life would be a lot different. I have never been married. I've been engaged once, no kids. I have a fur baby, so I have a dog that I love very much and a niece and a nephew. Um, but I, I joined Claim because I was struggling with dating and had honestly kind of given up on it. I This was the last straw. This was it. If this doesn't work, I'm never going to date again. I'm not going to get married. I'm going to grow old. 
this is it. This is my last shot. So um, I, I kind of came in with um, what have I got to lose? I'm going to try it. But I, nothing had really been working. I found myself really triggered by men. Um, and so this this has kind of taught me a lot of things that I really should have been taught a long time ago, like boundaries and what am I looking for and really have, being um, embodying my feminine. And so it's it's been helpful with dating, but it's also just helped me as a person. So I really enjoyed that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, beautiful. Okay, amazing. So, ladies, let's begin with, um, I guess let's begin with talking about how your dating reality was before you joined the program, right, and, 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 and how it is now, right? So, so that contrast. So, Nikki, you were saying that you're struggling, almost gave up on dating. Um, you know, the quality of – Shannon was saying that the quality of men was not good – um so yeah let's just talk about that the pain first because i feel like a lot of women who are going to listen to us and watch us um are, are in that now and so if you can just recall so i think from three of you shanna you are in a relationship right with a beautiful man and i think nikki and, and Jeannie, you're you're still you know you're, you're dating so you're still single um so yeah let's talk a little bit about how was it before like and and get into specifics like details and and, and stories are great as well you know uh because i hear so many women are just like where you are nikki you know burned out tired so what was that reality and experience before? so let's start with uh Jeannie. so i'm just gonna rotate and we're gonna yeah. switch places so yeah, Jeannie, how was that for you before? So the main thing that comes to mind um, when I think about how I used to date, um, and now, you know, I'm thinking back to before I was married, obviously, um, but but still, I remember it very well um, because it was frustrating. Um, I think that I definitely um, was... I, I was definitely sort of going after the men I was interested in. And then uh, from the get-go, their interest was sort of like, eh, I don't, why are you coming after me? <laughs> you know what I mean? I just felt like in the rest of my life, you know, I'm an entrepreneur and in the rest of my life, I always just, I go after things and I achieve them and I'm successful and it worked for me, right? And so I just thought with men, it would just be the same, you know? And then I just remember, like, I feel like looking back now, I think they were just like, why is she chasing me? Like, what's what's wrong with her? Kind of that she has to, feels like she has to, like, kind of try to pin me down, right? And then I also remember, um, you know, if a guy would express that, he wasn't, um, you know, interested or something like that. Like I would just try so hard to win him back. Like I was so taking on the masculine role. Like I, um, I would, I feel like I look back and I was kind of, um, manipulative in a way about it. Like I would try to like find ways to like make him like me again or something. Um, it's very vulnerable to share this, but I just feel like it's the reality of kind of how I used to approach it. And um, I definitely ended up dating a lot of more feminine men because um, they were the ones who would respond well to that kind of approach. Right. And then I and then I would lose interest in them and I'd be like, why am I not attracted to him anymore? You, You know, so it was just like all reversed and now it's just so different i mean it's just a night and day difference in terms of um okay hang on before we move on into yeah, how is it different ahead. now yeah okay I have, I, I have a few more questions here in terms of details so when you're saying yeah. i would go after the men and um yeah. and they would be like why is she coming after me so you had that kind of a you know pinning them down, going after them. And, yeah. you know, if they weren't responding, you would try hard to win them back. So 
can you give us a bit more detail in terms of like how would that happen would you be the one initiating the, all the conversations um planning the dates moving things forward like how, how like in practical terms how would that look like especially like were you mostly dating online if it was online or if it was offline mm-hmm. how how would that be So I don't really remember planning dates, but I do remember like being the one to message first a lot, like reaching out a lot, being sort of present, you know, in his world a lot. Like, don't forget about me. I'm still here, you know, sending funny things and just really, um, Yeah, just really like making sure you didn't sort of forget about me or something. Mm-hmm. Um I don't really remember planning dates. Um I think I did back then accept dates that now I wouldn't accept anymore, just like hanging out dates. Um you know, just like oh, let's just like hang out at one of our houses kind of thing, you know, which now that wouldn't fly with me. Um but Uh, especially in the beginning, you know, when you're just starting to date. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I think that's what it looked like. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, so what's, what's different now? Because I've seen a few pictures of you and your shares in our Facebook group and uh, yeah, yeah, it's quite, so, <laughs> it's so quite a transformation. Now. <laughs> yeah. So what's, yeah, what's your dating reality now? Yeah, it's vastly different now. I mean, From what I found, you know, it's really important to keep that keep that funnel going, which is, you know, being dating multiple men um at the same time. And in fact, now I see it so differently. Like if there's a guy I like, what I make sure like if there's a guy I like and I meet and I particularly like, you know, we all have that even for dating multiple people. Um I make sure that my funnel is like strong right? Like, because I don't want to become focused on him. And um, so I'm really conscious about, you know, keeping other guys around and being genuinely, you know, interested in in other men and what they have to offer um, instead of getting focused on one guy. So I feel like that's really, that's really very different. Um, That concept was totally foreign to me before. Um, Even the concept of the funnel. Yeah, the concept of the funnel. Like, I just thought like, oh, you meet somebody, you like them, and you're all in with that person, you know? And it's just like the worst thing to do. It's just doesn't work. And um, so now I'm finding um, that it's very easy to meet men both online. I'm I'm dating men right now that I've met online and in real life. And um, generally, I tend to be just just my experience, I tend to be a little more interested in the ones I've met in real life because I've usually met them somewhere where I'm doing something I'm interested in. So where have you met? Yeah. So where where have you met the ones that you met in real life? Because I think this is what the, the, let's get into the meat of dating because, you know, Mm -hmm. I tend to talk a lot about, you know, like obviously it's all about the energy and stuff, but I feel like I'm I'm really craving, okay, well, where do you meet the men? And so from hearing from real women, like, okay, where did you meet the guys that you've met and how did that happen? And then if you can tell us a little bit bit about your online experiences as well um, and how did that happen and where did that go? Sure. So as far as meeting men in real life, um, I met one, I'm an entrepreneur, so I met one at a conference that I went to in the fall. Um, And then we, we kind of lost touch for a while, but then we reconnected because now we happen to be in a, entrepreneur group together, um, in, in Philly. And, um, and so we've been dating and, uh, have a lot in common. It's really interesting to be able to talk about our businesses. Um, and then just two weeks ago, um, I went to a neighbor's house for brunch. I thought it was just going to be people from the neighborhood, but my friend who was throwing the brunch, her husband's cousin was there. And he was so cute. And I was like, hmm, I wonder if he's single. And uh, we ended up chatting for a long time. And then um, it was kind of awkward. We're in a big group. And I was like, well, there was no real way for like him to kind of um, ask for my number or whatever. We left it at different times. And so I said like to myself, what's the most feminine way I could approach this? And I just said to my friend, I was like, 
why don't you just ask your husband's cousin if he would like to have my number? And she did. And he said, yes. And he has my number and now we're messaging and we're planning to go out. So, you know, that was like more of an approach than I would kind of typically do, but I really liked him and I wanted to see him again. And I thought I really have nothing to lose here because he's, um, you know, he'll be, I'll probably never see him again otherwise. Um, but he was, he wrote and said, you know, I'm so glad that you uh, sent your number because I was interested. And I was like, okay, well, we'll see where that goes. Now I'm leaning back and letting mm -hmm. him take the lead, you know, because, um, so, uh, yeah, those were two recent in real life uh, people that I'm currently dating. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And the online dating stuff, how did that, how did that work out for you? Yeah, that's worked out pretty well. I'm, I'm pretty, um, I put right in my profile. I just decided I wanted to be really upfront about it to kind of vet some of the guys. Like I put in my profile. I really appreciate men who like taking the lead um, mm -hmm. to kind of just put it out there and let them know that that's what I like and that's what and that I will be appreciative of that. Right. And I feel like men really love being appreciated. And so I feel like the men who have responded to me generally are taking the lead because they've taken the hint um, that that's what I'm interested in. And um, yeah, I'm meeting Lots of great guys online too. Um, and uh, just, I'm having a lot of fun. I feel like um, when I first started dating, um, you know, I started dating about six months ago. And at first I felt like I was attracting more feminine men. Um, and as I've continued through the program now, I feel like I'm attracting very masculine men who are always the ones reaching out to me, who are planning the dates, who have ideas about what they'd like us to do together. I mean, it's been really, really nice. And the other thing I feel like that's shifted for me is I've just become a lot more vocal about what I like and don't like. For example, I had this man who's very masculine and very attractive, but he kept asking me to send pictures like throughout the day. He'd be like, oh, send, you know, I, I, he's like, well, how are you doing today? What are you up to? And I was like, well, I just left the gym. And he's like, send me a pic, send me a pic of you just leaving the gym and it made me feel really uncomfortable. And I just said, you know, I feel really uncomfortable with that. I feel very flattered that you want to see me, um, but I don't really like to take selfies all day long. And I don't like to do that. So that's just not going to work for me. And he was so respectful. He wrote back and he's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I never meant to make you feel uncomfortable. I just really, you know, I like seeing your face. And he's like, but I'll wait until it's in person. And I was like, perfect. And it just feels so nice. Like, I feel like before I just would have felt uncomfortable and maybe I would have like sent a couple awkward selfies and, you know, sort of just gotten all weird, about, you know, and then just felt a little resentful of him that he kept asking. But really, like I was the one who was just not saying what I'm comfortable with and not. So I feel like I've just gotten a lot more honest. And I feel like the thing that really allows me to do that as well is is the funnel, right? Because I'm not scared to lose any particular guy which is hugely important because it just lets everything be fun. You can just be yourself, be honest about what you like and you don't like. If they go away, it's okay. You know, I've met so many amazing guys, even in six or seven months, I've met so many amazing guys that it's like, just think who I'll meet in the next six months, you know, if I, and, and I'm at this point right now where I'm like, I'm not sure I want to be claimed right now. I'm having a blast. Like, I really like this. I don't know that my goal right now is to like find the one I would yeah. like to like date some more, you know, so that feels really good. Yeah. Oh, I love that so much. And I can clearly see, Jeannie, that you do have that abundance mindset when it comes to men, which is one of my biggest goals and intentions. Yeah. Um, you know, when women join the, the claim program is to really help them shift that mindset from like lack of, oh my God, what are you talking about? Three men. I can't even find one. I'm like, girlfriend. We need to work on that yeah, belief, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So um, I think what we're going to do after we talk a little bit about our own experiences in the end, towards the end, we're just going to do a quick kind of fire up of tips 
uh, in online dating mm-hmm. or out there and we're just going to fire them up and have a discussion between all of us. I'll let you all kind of chime in and say, okay, brainstorm, right? Like what has worked for you? But um, yeah, but b- before we do that, one last question for you, Jenny. So this, all of this transformation, you know, from frustrated to fun, to allowing men to lead and to just kind of be there and, you know, being, being a lot more honest and having that funnel, what would you say has been the number one shift or transformation um, as, as you went through the program for you that allowed you to shift from that mindset of scarcity of men to an abundance of men, to have a lot of fun, to have that dating funnel, really open yourself up to a different dating reality? Yeah, I think it's just placing a lot more value on myself and what I have to offer. Like, I really do think of myself as the prize now, like, show me what you have to offer, you know, and I, I have things, lots to offer, you know, and I'm willing to offer it, but I, I don't really invest in men anymore unless I see them investing in me first. I want them to invest first. That's what feels really good. And so, and, and I also try to really mirror, you know, their investment. So like if they invest, I'll invest a little. And if they invest a little more, I'll invest a little more, but I won't start to invest a ton in a guy who's not investing in me. Um, because it's just not, it's like genuinely not worth my time, you you know? Um, Mm -hmm. so I feel like that's been a really huge shift for me um it I just feel so differently about it yeah beautiful and I always say I think this is one of the rules in claim dating or something about you know you get the best piece and then you are the prize and I'm so happy to see you not only obviously think that but also embody that Jeannie because men really want to be with women like that I mean great healthy masculine men they want to be with women I mean if you don't I mean everybody knows you know don't you don't love yourself how can anybody else love you but if you see yourself yeah. as the prize and and as someone who values her time and her energy and so when you when you feel that what a gift to give to a man that you're dating because he feels like this is special and this woman is special Mm -hmm. you know rather than as you said your experience was before like going after them and making sure he's liking me you know coming from Mm -hmm. that again scarcity mindset and maybe you know lack of self-worth in a way a mindset but what a beautiful thing to be in that healthy I am the prize obviously not overly egotistical about it but just being right here and now and real and being like I'm here and I'm ready um you know but my uh, but my time is valuable and I know who who I am and I am amazing you know I've been telling my husband I'm amazing since the day we've met and he's like yeah you are amazing you know <laughs> but I had to believe that yeah. about my Myself first and so yeah. um yeah awesome thanks so much for for sharing that Jenny I'm, I'm so happy uh for you and and the process so all right beautiful let's shift gears and now we'll go to Shanna and um Shanna you you have a full interview with me um you know on the podcast where we talked about <clears throat> your journey in the program and what has happened for you um and and yeah, just your transformation. So I guess now we can focus on on the dating itself because I don't think we had the conversation about, you know, dating. I know you've obviously I read your posts and your shares and and I think you've from what I remember you really embraced that mantra of, you know, every man that you meet is going to be better than than the previous one. So, yeah, tell us a little bit more about, you know, how was your dating life before and maybe like specifics again, maybe like a story or an example. And then after you went through the program or maybe we're going through it, um, how was your dating reality after? Sure. Uh, so before the program, I was similar to Jeannie in that I was really available. I just made sure that I was all in. And mine probably... <laughs> of course, was tinged with a bit of wanting to be chosen, wanting to be accepted. But I also had this kind of distorted idea in my mind that I just needed to give everything. I needed to just be all in and show you 100%. This is how wonderful I am. This is how fantastic I am. I'm great in bed. I'm a fantastic cook. I have, don't I look great on your arm? I have great fashion sense. And so it was just like all of me and all of my my inner workings just out there and ready to pick like you're at a farmer's market and you can just pick Shanna up. And I, I think that 
you know, to some extent, you know, men that I was dating, they were like, great, this is, this woman is easy. Not, not in the easy sense that, you know, people like to say, oh, she's an easy lay. Not in that, although I also was at the time, because I was confused in thinking that you needed to establish that sexually you have chemistry. Guess what? You're two people who have never been intimate before. There's going to be some form of chemistry. You're a man. He's a woman. Biology is at work. That's biology. That's not chemistry and that's not connection, but we tell ourselves it is that. So guys were able, there was nothing to achieve with me. I was saying I was special, but I was giving it all away, kind of casting my pearls before swine, that old Bible saying. Um, and I didn't realize that that's what I was doing. Um, and I, I think that in the program, I learned to value myself. I learned to show up for myself. I learned that I had so much more that was special and beautiful and interesting about me. And I was not about to just share that with anybody. They needed to earn it. They needed to, it's not so much earn, although that is that they needed to deserve it. They needed to be worth it. And so I grew with a sense of value that I didn't have before. And I think that as I moved through dating, that helped things become a lot clearer with boundaries. Um, you know, with, with the men before I would date, I would probably stay s silent about some of those things that maybe I didn't like, that I just would maybe shape shift or more for mini minimize about myself instead of like showing up honestly and abundantly and fully as myself, unapologetically myself. And so as I started doing that, um, on, on the one hand, some men as I dated dropped like flies and it was either them dropping off because they were, they knew they had no chance in this game or me batting them away because I knew they had no chance in this game because I was no longer, um, waiting to be chosen. I was deciding who I was going to choose. And that was a really big shift. Is, is learning how my unconscious needs were, I was projecting them into my dating scenarios and then f working to fix them and understand them and show up for myself so that I would not just project that onto every man I met. Can you meet this for me? Can you meet that for me? Can you do this for me? It's like, no, you fill your own cup up first and then the rest is kind of a cherry on top and it's nice. Mm. Well, that's that, you know, like, as I hear you talking, I'm like, this is what the work is about, you know, and that's why I ask you, well, give me some stories, give me some detail about like the interactions with the men, but it's really, you know, the work that I do is not telling you the, 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 the tips and stuff, because that's why for me, you can like get all the texting guides and you can get you know, everything that's out there on the market. And I'm sure that some of you might have tried that before, you know, when women, there's a problem in dating, well, maybe I, maybe I just fix up what I say or, okay, well, if he needs photos, like I need to understand his desire, of, you know, his visual, and maybe I need to send that more or whatever. It's just that it's just a sprinkle. It's not fixing anything. In fact, it's just further, um, you know, contributing to, to the problem of you, you know, as, as you, Shanna said, I, I'm, I was no longer waiting to be chosen. And so this is deep work. And that's what like, I'm banging about this message. Um, but I also understand that, you know, to, to attract women into this work, a lot of women actually get into this work, just, um, how shall I say, they think what they think is, they need to change. They think that they need to change the way what, what I text to a man, you know, or the way I dress or the way I need to sit like in a more feminine way or whatever the dating coaches are telling them to do based on their head, you know, but it's actually so like this work of, as you said, Shana, I started to value myself. Same thing with Jeannie. And, and so then, so then I don't need to give you any of the dating tips or the how to put things on your profile. Although this is important. This is all the practical things, you you know, but it, you know, <laughs> so that's why I'm like struggling a bit in that because that's important, but that comes after and you know, you don't even have to think about it much because it just happens so naturally as you're describing now. Sure. I think that 
I totally know where those women were are coming from because I came from that same perspective too. Mm. It didn't take long in the program where I went, oh, this isn't about that. Oh, well, that's getting better anyway. So, okay, keep doing it. Keep getting the results. But I know that before the program, I would analyze all the text messages and I would agonize over how I formulated my profile. And definitely as I went through the program, my because I did that work to learn to know myself, my profile was easy. I knew how I wanted to represent myself and I wasn't going to do it any other way. And I knew how to express myself in a way that was light and open and still genuine. My profile said some a similar, um, you know, I don't want to call it boundary, but expectation that, that Jeannie put in hers. I said, I think it was in my likes or looking for likes. And one of the bottom lines was um, men who value masculine, feminine polarity in a relationship. And putting that in there started bringing out the good men hmm. um, because they did. And they knew that I was... They knew that I didn't mean, oh, I want a traditional man. I'm going to be a housewife. They knew that I wanted them to take the lead. They knew that I wanted to be able to receive their attention and that I had a, a vessel for that. Um, and so I, I, the agony over profiles diminished. <laughs> and I would still work. I mean... I, I love it when someone in the group posts, like, look at this text exchange. I'm sorry. That's just fun. Like, <laughs> who doesn't love reading that? It's just, it's, it's good times. But I would say if it was a, a a way to kind of express it to these ladies who don't understand, I would say, okay, you're saying this. Let's imagine all the other ways you could say this. What's another way that you could respond that comes across a little bit softer or a little bit more curious or a little bit more open and and play just like exploratory games because we haven't had that practice prior prior heretofore prior to claimed we didn't practice that we didn't we practiced taking charge we practiced communicating like one of the boys and and probably the times that our feminine side did come out it came out a little sideways because we weren't in it fully. We were masculine men who um, were wearing this cloak of masculinity, but inside were these feminine essence women. And we don't know, by the time we finally would express our needs, it probably came out a little passive aggressive. It probably came out a little short and demanding instead of expressing a need in a way that invites, you know, that saying by um, Winston Churchill, diplomacy is telling someone to go to hell and they look forward to the trip. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, it's expressing ourselves in a, in a way to our man, a need where you might be like, you know, I really need my gate fixed. I need help with that. Or I, I need help mounting a TV. And they're like, I am really good at hanging TVs. I want to hang this TV for you. And you're like, fantastic. And do you know what? Actually, I did have a TV that needed hanged, hung. And guess what? I got involved with my man doing it, and it was too low and off center. I fucked it up. I said, I should have just stepped away and let you do it, huh? He said, yeah, you should have. <laughs> you know, that reminds me of a, I was I was walking with, with my daughters um, the other day, and I turned around into this corner, and I see a car just parked there like it was, you know, like a, off street like a small street and on gravel and I see these three girls super young like in their 20s like um yeah, obviously the car was some something broke down or tire change or something and they were like rolling this huge tire of a four-wheel drive and the other one was like carrying this this thing that <laughs> I don't even know what it is because I've never done it you know that like pumps the tire puts it whatever and they're like rolling and do and immediately I didn't even think about this I'm like Hey girls, do you need? I here's what I said. I said, do you need a man to help you out? Because my husband, I'm, I'm just like two doors down. My husband is at home, and they just kind of looked at me. I think there was a moment of a shock there, or a bit of like, you know, they gave me that that look of like female empowerment look. Some sort of like, what you you think I can't? We can't. 
and it, it was like a weird moment, but to me it was like so nice. She's like, no, 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 we we can do it. We we actually want to do it by ourselves, you know. And and as I was walking, I could feel them staring at me <laughs> and being like, you know. And, th- and that was me in the past. That was me who's like, you know, always trying to kind of I can do it all on my own, like now you know and i'm thinking oh my god but i if, if i can't do it so what would happen if one day i break down and i'm like i mean obviously if i'm in the middle of nowhere and there's no men around or anybody else like i can do it you know i'm not stupid um but i'm like i'll just ask a man <laughs> <laughs> to me, this is such a natural thing now that, or my husband said the other day, he's like, when was the last time you carried groceries? I'm like, when you were away once a year. Um, <laughs> this is just so natural to me. I, I just, I don't live in the world anymore. We're like, why? Like, especially like I'm with, you know, a baby and a toddler and like, why would I? Anyways, yeah, just wanted to share that as you were talking about fixing the TV and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, beautiful. All right. Well, thanks, Shana. Um, This was so beautiful to hear. And and as I said, we're going to do a fire kind of like best tips from Shana, best best tips from Jeannie in terms of your profile, what to say or or what not to say. Um, But now let's go to Nikki. Um, Nikki, I'm sure you're you're now inspired by our conversation. So how was the dating reality for you before you joined and and how is it now? Um, Well, so before I joined, I, I've been single for a long time. And what would happen is I would, um, despite working around a lot of people for whatever reason, I didn't, I felt like I can't meet people in real life. That was my belief. So I thought the only way I'm going to meet people is getting on dating apps. So I would get on a dating app and I'd go out with a guy or two and inevitably like either the first or second guy would do something so triggering to me that I would just delete the app and I'm done, I'm off. Or I'd meet somebody and he, I'd like him enough that I'd be like in the funnel and I'd, and I'd find myself sucked into kind of a relationship with a guy that probably would have been a no if I had kept other people in my funnel. Mm-hmm. But he kind of charmed his way in. And then before I knew it, I have this like guy that I never wanted to be in a relationship with all of a sudden is my boyfriend. And I'm like, taking care of them and it's not the way I want it. And I'm attracting guys that love that part of me that gets things done and they're happy to sit back. And I couldn't figure it out. I'm like, what's wrong with me? I, you know, do so, so much good in every area of my life. So I would either get stuck in kind of sidelines of those relationships that I shouldn't have ever gone in to begin with because there was like an attraction or I would date a guy. And like I said, he'd do something really triggering to me. And instead of knowing how to state my boundaries in a soft way or knowing how to explain what made me uncomfortable, I would just get triggered, feel traumatized. I would read everything like the worst possible way. But in a lot of times, I think maybe I triggered the guys to act worse than maybe they would have if I had approached them in a more feminine response. I think I would approach when I felt triggered, I would come at them with masculine energy. Like you can't, you're not going to hurt me. I'm going to, I'm going to stand up for myself and how dare you. And then they would give me that same energy back and it would be even worse. And I'd be like traumatized. So I think just that just, I just would get off dating, and I would stop dating for a year after that. Like, and then I would get back on a year later and I'd have a blow up with somebody and then I'd just be off. Nope. Off for another year. So I've done this for 10 years where I've gone on and off and like maybe had a six month relationship with a guy I shouldn't have been with in between there. But mm. Um, I was done. I was done with that pattern. And so it's definitely changed for sure. Wow. <clears throat> That's big, Nikki. That's really big. In fact, I'm, you know, yesterday I had a coaching call and, and I had two women ask me the same exact question. Well, I'm going through the program and, you know, I felt like I, I want to go on online dates again, online apps. And then she goes on the app and then the minute she meets this guy who is you know, right away asking for a picture to what Jeannie says. She's like, oh my God, what do I do? I immediately want to pull back, close all the apps. And I'm like, done, this is not working for me. And I'm like, hang on a second. Like, and that's what I asked her. I'm like, what mm-hmm. is stopping you from communicating your boundary and saying, I'm not comfortable with that. Just like Jeannie said. And then 
delete, mm-hmm. block, unmatch, and move on. Like, mm-hmm. but this woman is new into the program, right? So, so she hasn't gone through the whole mm-hmm. process. But this is how, and I love what you're saying, and and it's like a cycle because it it's really triggering. And you you're even using the word traumatizing, Nikki, which is which is quite a heavy, serious word, but. Well, and I can't, you know, and you're saying 10 years. So it's a cycle. It's a cycle that just yeah. gets repeated and repeated. And, and and obviously, you know, that idea or that belief system that there's no good men. Of course, there's no good men because you go in, the first thing you see is triggering, then you like back in it. And mm-hmm. so, wow, that's, that's, that's really big. And that's really painful um, <clears throat> to be in that cycle. And, and, and you're right, that defensiveness kind of, and it's just perpetuating it, right? So maybe you feel like you're never going to get out of it so and in the beginning you shared nikki that you know this is going to be your last thing otherwise you're <clears throat> excuse me otherwise like i'm giving up on dating i'm giving up yeah. on men and i'm so glad you did this and you said yes to yourself and so and obviously this is a journey right like if for 10 years you've been in that cycle and uh-huh. you know i know that perhaps you know it's it's not it's never perfect but yeah so so what has changed have you been able to break that cycle of like oh my god i'm off the apps this is traumatizing like I mean, i'm done with this <laughs> like i still have things that are traumatizing which is kind of i, I i'm feeling judgment around that i know i'm trying to mm-hmm. not feel judgment around that but um my but i i didn't realize how in my head I was, and I have many, many, many years of just not being in my heart and just being completely disassociated. So even just like coming into like feeling things, now I can feel it. And even when my body starts doing its um, fight or flight, like, I mean, I was, I messaged in the group the other day, I felt like I was back to square one because, you know, I had messaged with the guy and he kind of gave me a really cold, like, sorry, that's too much work for me. And I, my whole body started shaking. I went into a pan, not a panic attack, but I went into the feeling of my entire inner body vibrating in anger and in, in, I don't know, I guess it was anger. Um, but it was like, whoa, this guy, I don't even know this guy. I barely like this guy. And I like talked myself out of it. And I was like, you know, this, this guy's not going to be the one that's going to send me off the dating app. So now I've kind of regulated to where I'm not perfect yet. I have a long way to go, but compared to what I was before the program where I would have let one guy being a jerk ruin my, me finding the chance to meet a wonderful masculine man. I think about all the years I wasted because one jerk or two jerks or whoever they were, you know, were they, you know, they were validly jerks. You know, one guy was like, I met him one time for coffee and he said he wanted to find me after that coffee and stalk me. So I got really angry and I got really scared and I got really triggered, but I really should have just been like, wow, you know, okay. I didn't realize I had that big of an effect on you. That doesn't work for me. Have a good time. You know, we're not a good match, but I got angry and I, you know, I allowed him to, you know, make me feel fear, make me feel like he was going to stalk me and then think, oh, I can't, what am I doing? Why am I putting myself out there like that to these creeps? And I told the story that there weren't good guys. And so that's definitely changed. And even when I did start dating again, just leaning back is a new one for me as well. I went after the guys I thought were cute and sexy. And usually those were the bad boys that were hard to get. So I loved the guys that I had to work really hard to get. And when I got them, I felt like I was the winner. And what I got was a guy that was in his feminine and wanted me to take care of him. So, you know, I didn't really get the prize that I thought I got, but I'm trying to change that in my body. I'm trying to change to be attracted to caring, nice men that plan dates for me. And so I've kind of gone through this cycle of attracting really wonderful men that I had zero attraction to and trying to make it work. But man, when I first put it out there that I wanted these nice guys and kind of followed the rules of the program, the men that were coming were planning dates, were picking me up, were doing all the things that I've always wanted and thought a guy should do for me. And these guys didn't even know me and were doing things for me that boyfriends I had dated for years didn't do for me. Like, so what? I'm like, okay. What are the examples? Like taking me on a, taking me on a date, 
taking me to a nice dinner, picking me up and driving me and um, not making me drive my car with them in the passenger side and split the bill. So they were, these guys were picking me up and opening a door for me and putting me in a, in a nice car and driving me to a nice dinner where I didn't have to pay anything. And then, you know, even the first couple of guys would do this and I wasn't kissing them. I wasn't giving them anything in return. It was not transactional like mm-hmm. I was used to. I used to think that if somebody was going to do that for me, I had to return the favor either with sexual favors or my attention or to do something for them or buy them something or, you know, I couldn't just let them give to me. So that's changed. Hmm. Oh, Nikki, send, f- feeling for you a lot and sending you so much love and, and also empathy because I know that, you know, Christina, Christina Lane is one of the other stars among all of the stars, that, which you are the stars in the program. You know, I remember when she said, you know, this is hard. Dating is hard. And especially, especially if you've gone through a cycle for many, many years like that, Nikki, because every woman is different and every body is different and every story is so different. And sometimes, you know, right now we might be, you might be dealing with something that obviously you're trying to kind of, you know, I, I imagine this, this, um, ball of yarn and there's so many like threads in there and there's so many <clears throat> knots that we, and threads that we, we need to pull and layers. And so mm-hmm. this is deep work. And I really wanted to just tell you that, you know, we see you and I'm so proud of you for making that progress. progress. And the most important thing now is that awareness. The first step is the awareness of like, why am I like, why am I making th- this jerk or this one story of a guy that I just met who said something, making a big deal of making a story around it, being in my head about it and letting him ruin my day, like for days, you know, and I, mm-hmm. and I talk about it with all of my girlfriends and I post it everywhere and I just need to mull over it because it, <laughs> and it's like the story and you're just in your head and it's a cycle. Mm-hmm. So the first step is just to be aware of, that's why, you know, I think, you know, the, the coaches here and the women who really get it, they're like, we develop a sense of detachment from the story by developing this capacity to feel what's inside, taking radical responsibility for our own feelings. And like, this is my stuff and whatever you're doing there, that's not a reflection of who I am and what I feel. And you don't have ownership over me. This is, this is what actually like, you know, d- developing that emotional intelligence when it comes to all people, but especially men, because this is triggering because, you know, the the men, men are our mirrors and men are our teachers, every single one of them, even the jerk who wants to stalk you, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And so, yeah, I I really wanted to congratulate you. And I know that, you know, you're still in your way, but just the fact that you're here, Nikki, and sharing your story, this also gives a lot of the women permission out there because, you know, women think that, oh my God, when is that going to be an enlightening moment where I'm just, all men are just going to be so amazing and it's easy and it's fun. And, and like, I'm sure Jeannie and Shanna have had their shares of, um, <laughs> you know, of really bad interactions. But the thing is that we don't want to focus on that. We want to look for evidence where men are great. And, 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 and you have that effort. You're like, he took me to a nice restaurant and paid for it mm-hmm. and drove me there and I didn't even have to do anything. Wow. You know, that wow factor, that becomes your reality the more you practice that because that's what you expect. Well, because first you are the prize and because you value yourself and that's what you expect. And then as you see more and more of that, you're like, again, shifting from that scarcity into the abundance mindset about men. So. Amazing. I'm so proud of you, Nikki, and thanks for showing up and continuing to do the work because, again, this is just layers and layers and layers. So, all right, ladies, you're welcome. So, thank you. Um, Okay, so let's do a quick fire up. I'm going to unmute all of you, Shanna, Jeannie, and Nikki. And let's talk about, for those, I'm hoping by now that the women listening or watching, they understand that this is, you know, the the dating stuff, this is not about the tips and the gimmicks and what to say and stuff like that. The first, it's all about depth first, structure second. It's all about learning and repatterning and really shifting that belief system that you have about men, about yourself and about relationships, going deep and saying, well, you know, why am I being defensive? Why, 
why do I feel like I'm not worthy of great men? I have that. Why can't I trust men? And why do why do I react this way every single time that there is a man that I'm not comfortable with what he's doing or saying? I take it so personally and make a story around it. So the first step is shifting all of that. And then when you get there, I mean, you know, essentially what happens a lot of the times is that naturally you just meet great men. You don't even need to do anything. You're just observing, leaning back and letting them come to you. But then again, I, you know, we live in online dating world post COVID and everything. And if you want to maximize your chances of putting yourself out there and just saying, I'm available and I'm ready and I'm ready for you guys to come and get me so I can lean back and relax. Um, so let's talk about, you know, some of the, so maybe think about some of the top tips you would give a woman who is struggling um, with dating today, especially maybe online dating. Think of the things that you have done that you would have liked to hear, you know, when you were like putting your profile up or responding to men or you know, communicating the fact that, oh, well, you should pick up the check, you know, those kind of sticky situations. Um, so, yeah, let's begin. And this is an open table. So you ladies let me know who wants to go first. Shanna looks like she she has something. I always have something. <laughs> yes, um, please. So, so assuming that you're doing the groundwork of – uh, excavating your limiting beliefs and coming to understand yourself and feel solid in, in truly knowing your your wants and needs and you're approaching dating from that foundation, right? I would, I would tell people dating apps are a tool. They are one single tool that you can pull out of your tool chest to put yourself out in the world of dating. And you can never get by in life with using just one tool. You need to be open when you're going to the grocery store. You need to be uh, presenting yourself in such a way that, that you're willing to interact with anyone you might meet on the street or where you're at the gym or, or in your friendships at work, maybe get involved with some community events. But you, if you, just like dating and we need to have a funnel so that we're not, our world isn't hinged upon one man, your dating life can't be hinged upon one dating tool. Mm. And so I would say you need to have a funnel of dating avenues as well, uh, would be my first tip. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And how do you go about that, Shane? Like, do you sit down and think about, <clears throat> you know, what are the interests? Like, what would your advice be there? Yeah. So in doing the work where you're starting to learn to love yourself and you're coming to understand your wild woman, you should be exploring new hobbies and interests. Like Jeannie said, the people she's most drawn to are the ones she's met when she's living the life she wants to live. So I think in living the life that you want to live, you're going to attract other people who have that similar vibration. So you could just be, you know, working out or trying a new hobby, learning to sail and and meet someone who it might be like, huh. This, this could work out. So I think sometimes it's not about making sure your every effort is focused on finding someone. you you got to have a full life mm -hmm. and be open to where and how it finds you. Yeah, beautiful. Wow. And I'll, I'll throw one other tip out here that yeah. I just learned recently. Um, I pe My boyfriend has said to me, I don't believe you when you say people have been coming on to you, don't come on to you. And I said, oh yeah, no one would ever approach me. No one had ever come on to me. And then we, we got to talking more once. And I said, oh, yeah, people tell me my hair looks cute all the time. People tell me they love my makeup all the time. Mm -hmm. People tell me they love my outfit all the time. He said, yeah, they're coming on to you. <laughs> so <laughs> you, I said, well, shit, I've been come on to my wife. <laughs> Didn't know it. Didn't know it. But um, so it could, it, I have been told that if a man compliments you, there's a reason. And so it could be, you might just think, yes, this is a fantastic outfit, but really <laughs> they are expressing their interest in you. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is actually something really yeah. interesting when, you know, I'm currently studying the, the pickup industry and, and all of that stuff, which there's a lot of wrong things about that. But one of the things that, um, you know, men are being taught is, I mean, men are not even being taught, but when you understand the male's reality, 
of because you know they're the hunters i mean this whole polarity thing it's in our genes as you said in the beginning shan it's like they're constantly scanning like single men right they're constant i mean even the married men they're not yeah. scanning but they notice obviously they notice women just like i notice hot men i'm like oh you're hot and then i move forward <laughs> you know but the <laughs> single men they're constantly searching. It's like a constant scanning radar of women to approach. You know, they're in constant approach state and a mindset. And so when they enter a bar, when it's a grocery store, it's like their minds are, even if she's behind, she's, he's already feeling he can't help himself, but like turn around because, you know, it's the vibe, the energy, maybe the smell, maybe the hair, like <laughs> his radar just you know he sees shanna he doesn't know what the hell's going on here but it's like he can't help himself but being drawn to it and then his mind is like okay mission approach what do i say what do i do so then as soon as he identified you as the female to approach and he wants to because you look hot or you look good or whatever the vibe the energy the smell then he starts thinking immediately and this is even unconscious like how do i approach what does she what what do i see about her and actually i'm going to share something that's really i when i read about this i was like wow so in the whole pickup industry which for for some of you who might not know there's a whole industry out there that teaches men how to pick up women like literally pick up for the purpose of dating them and a lot of the times for just sleeping with them but anyways i'm, I'm as i said before there's a lot of problems in this approach but you know with the pickup thing there's a rule that they all learn that there's a three second rule you have th as soon as you see a woman that you want to approach you have three seconds to do it because if you don't mm -hmm. then all of your fears of rejections kick in and then you stop yourself you freeze and then you leave and that's what i was so that's why men are like three seconds so identify there's an object that i want to approach three seconds what is it hair makeup maybe she's looking at a lemon and doesn't know what to do with it and then he comes in and says hey shanna oh not shanna hey um how much are these lemons so when a man asks you about anything just assume that he's approaching you and he's interested that's it period yeah. he might be no he might be like a random guy and his wife is like around the corner wanting lemons but don't assume that because he you'll know but just assume that he's approaching you and he's interested <laughs> yeah i thought this was so fun yeah cool okay Shana, thank you nikki Jeannie, do you have anything any tips or something that's worked for you yeah i have a couple tips that come to mind um one of them is you know i i really only say in my profile that i like men who take the lead i don't say anything else about what i'm looking for and that's pretty intentional because i don't want them to try to be what i'm looking for and i feel like when we kind of get interested in someone, sometimes we can do that um, if we've sort of read what they're looking for. So I want to see how they show up. And all I say is I like men who take the lead. Um, I really like, I've seen people sort of, women especially sort of complain about like, oh, like a first date being like coffee or drinks or something like that. But I actually really like a low investment first date. And I think... Um, First of all, because I don't want to be stuck for a whole dinner with someone if I meet them and I'm like, wow, I'm really not feeling you like right off the bat. But second of all, because when I think about what I'm looking for in a partner, I want somebody who values his time and his money. And if he's throwing like expensive dinners at like every woman he's meeting, like I just don't that to me, that doesn't feel right. So like I take that as a really good sign when the first date is low investment. In fact, when I first started dating, my my best first date yet was with a guy who suggested like a walk in the park and he bought me an ice cream. Like, and it was lovely. Like it was a beautiful day. There were like beautiful flowers on the trees. We're walking, we're talking. I'm wearing a beautiful sundress. Like I have this ice cream cone. Like he was the sweetest guy. We had an awesome time and it was super low investment, you know? So I would say don't, you know, don't let that be a turnoff or feel mm -hmm. like he's not putting enough into it. Like, it's fine. It's good. It's a good sign, I think. Um, the other thing I would say is, like, just keep it playful. Just keep it fun. Like, you'll have so much more fun. I've discovered I have so much more fun dating when I just keep it super playful, where I feel like I'm in charge 
of keeping it light and fun and playful. Like I like that job as a feminine essence woman, you know, I like thinking like, how can I respond in a way that's going to like make him laugh or like, how can I respond in a way that will tease him a little bit or, you know, may or be very, you know, how can I respond in a very feminine, you know, soft way or, or whatever. But, um, because men, they're not as, big of communicators as women are. And I just feel like when we sort of take that role on, it becomes really fun for everybody. Um, so I try not, not to get into any serious discussions, like, you know, in the first couple of dates, I just keep the goal, like to keep it very fun. Um, and in that way, it's become so much more fun for me. And I feel like the guys are clearly having way more fun with me than my old style. So that's good. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No talking about what you're looking for. Like no asking what he's looking for. Like, just don't go there. Just like, let him bring that stuff up when he's ready and just, you know, your goal is to have fun. That's it. Yeah. Their actions will show you what they're yes. looking for. That's and right. So you don't right. have to like get it lined out and, and make sure they'll show you. And yeah. you, that's the beauty of getting yeah. to choose. And I'm with, um, I'm with Jenny. Keeping it light is definitely like in my profile, I get the most compliments with saying, Hey, your energy seems really fun. And you know, you seem like a really like awesome girl. You seem like you're, you know, so I definitely try to come across very positive. I mean, I'm a positive person anyway, but I express that in my yeah. profile and I try to keep it simple. And then I also noticed that um, the picture of me just laughing with a glass of Prosecco and a dress was the one that everybody like liked the most. Like in some of the apps, you can tell which one the guys like the most. So that's now my profile picture on all my apps because I'm like, okay, clearly the guys love this picture of me laughing in this dress. And I get so many compliments on that. And so I thought that was, you know, where normally I might not put a picture of me in a dress up front. But so can I ask like all of you, what, what, because we're talking about profiles, can I, because because I know Nikki and Je Jeannie, you're like actively dating um, and then Shannon can yeah. share. So about the profiles, can you, can you ladies just read me your profiles? Like, what does it actually say on your profile? Because mm -hmm. um, I know Jeannie, you said, um, you know, letting a man, I like, you said, um, I like men who take the lead. Okay, great tip. Uh, yeah. um, what else is on your profile? I, I don't know if I still have it on my profile, but um, I used to say, I used to make a joke of it. I used to say, I like men who take, or, I appreciate men who take the lead. If I, if I didn't, I would have stayed on Bumble. <laughs> it's, it's kind of like what I made, I made a joke of it. And I got a lot of guys like, commenting like that they thought that was funny you know what I mean like that you know yeah. the feminine guys are more on bumble because they want the women to approach them and I was just like so that was kind of fun and let me find my program. I have a um where there's a thing that's like I'm hoping you dot 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 that's where I kind of put my thing in and mm -hmm. I, one of the other claimed girls, she says, I'm a little too wordy. So I'm trying to work on not being too wordy. Um, but I, I definitely over explain sometimes. So I'm working on that too. But mine says, I'm hoping you take initiative, have the softest touch, but the firmest hug, some deep thoughts peppered with goofy humor and an empathetic heart with a warrior spirit. Mm, nice. That's like masculine, but also vulnerable masculine. Yeah. I like that. Um, so mine is pretty short. So it just says, um, I value personal growth and creating a life I don't need a vacation from, but I still really love vacations. I dance salsa, bachata, and merengue, and I have the hips to prove it. <laughs> and um, I love men who take the lead, period. Yeah. Wow, beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, I stole something. I, I would screenshot mine and save them because I got so good at it that people would ask me. I know. So, so I, do, I, know. I do have one saved from my hinge. And I think I stole this from Angel in Hawaii um, from hinge. It says first round is on me if and I wrote never, darling, never. <laughs> 
I love that. I love that. <laughs> One other thing that I, I know that kind of has some back and forth in the, the group about this, but for me, what makes me feel safe when I'm first meeting somebody, I kind of have like my rules, which I try not to be, I, I'm flexible on my rules, but in general, when somebody is texting me, I, I'm i like everybody else. I don't want a pen pal. I don't want people to a text relationship. Mm-hmm. I, I want to meet somebody fairly soon, but schedules are being what they are and many men being very busy and me being busy. I try to get them to do a video hello because all the apps have a video hello. And I find for me, that makes me more comfortable because I don't want to give my phone number out. I use my phone to text clients all day. And so the last thing I want is five guys texting me good morning in the middle of me texting yeah. clients. And they do, they will send pictures at six in the morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How's your morning? Yeah. How's your morning? How's your morning? Yeah. So I like keep it all on the app. That way when I'm feeling flirty and when I'm feeling like I want to, you know, talk to somebody, I pick up the app and I answer my messages. I don't get irritated at them texting me at inopportune times because I keep it separate. When I finally do do a little video chat with them, you know, and we meet in person, then of course I give them my phone number and it becomes a little bit more personal. But, you know, I find some guys don't want to do the video chat and that's okay. Um, If they are opposed to that, I'm kind of curious and I I try not to judge them for it, but I've had guys try to catfish me. So Mm -hmm. I'm not looking to get catfished. I want to see what somebody looks like before I meet them. I want to know if they can carry a conversation, if there's a little spark of chemistry before I give them, you know, 30 minutes to an hour of my time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. What else? I think there's nothing wrong with asking for that. I think somebody Mm -hmm. posted in the group this week about someone saying it was too much effort to have a video chat. That's what was me. (laughs) That was you. Okay. That was me. Yeah, he, he shut yeah. me down. He said, you're too much, too much work. And I was like, it's in my profile. I have it in my profile. The best way to go on a date with me is to hop on a video chat and see if we have chemistry. It's right there in my profile. Exactly. Yeah. And he's like, it's not, I think the beauty of, I think the program is you start to not take things so personally. Like it's not such a personal assault or in, right. injury. You go like, well, you're not showing up how I want. So right. goodbye. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Next. Mm-hmm. And then you more. think of, yeah, and then you think about all the guys like you haven't been interested in for whatever reason. You know what I mean? For whatever reason. And then you just realize they're just doing the same thing. It's okay. Mm-hmm. It's not personal. They're just not your guy. Yeah, it yeah. feels so much lighter. Yeah. Um, and I love how we, you know, when we, I have one more question about the dating and then we'll finish but I love how like when we started talking about the profiles and the dating and the tips how this is so light and all of you were smiling and we were laughing about you know a genie and Nikki and sh- like this is what it's all about you know and I'm all about you know this program and this process is all about helping you go from that frustrated burnt out oh my god dating is so much work and I, oh, I can't do it giving up oh, I can't dragging yourself on a date yet having all of these you know defensive like don't you know it's okay. it's it's better to just not even be there than to 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 drag yourself like it's a chore like I have to do it so you're going to go through a process where it becomes light and fun and and there's a proven way to do this and so for everybody listening if you're interested I'm just going to do a plug in here you should go and apply for your free discovery call which is a short interview that Nikki Jeannie and Shanna you've all been through this um you know you've all been in the program we have an amazing community and we're just I'm just so excited to get as many women as possible obviously to go through this because a a, a different dating reality is there for all women who are ready and willing to 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 do the work I mean everybody wants just easy and fun but there is some excavation to be done here and and you know and with a sense of curiosity and openness because this is all about exploring you and how can you become the price and how can you value yourself and then from that place dating becomes a lot more fun so so that's claim.com slash apply there's a calendar there you can book your quick call to see whether this is a fit and we can talk to you about where you're at and and provide a solution for you and my last question to all of you ladies which is popping up you know a lot and this is one of the top questions from women is like who picks the check well we all know who picks the check but um i'm curious how have you navigated this like sensitive subject of who pays for for dates I haven't had it pop up that often, but if 
the opportunity where I know the guy has paid for quite a bit. I mean, every now and then I might do a little treat back just to f- make him feel like I'm not taking advantage of him. But I've really, I've been fairly lucky. I've not had a lot of guys like take me out on a date and then look at me to split the check and I haven't volunteered or felt the need to offer. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Same. I've had this, I've had the same experience. Um, I'm always immediately thankful. Like I always say, oh, you know, as soon as he reaches for the check, I just say, oh, thank you so much. You know, I really appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I've, I've never had anybody ask, um, to split it or sit there and look at it <laughs> like, you know, so I've been, yeah, same. Yeah. I, uh, sim- similarly, I mean, before part of my masculine behavior in dating was to always offer to pay or to mm-hmm. split or just to wait and see and then swoop in. That's my being so available right now. When that check mm-hmm. gets put down, my my eyes are always just straight across, or they were, right? I'm in a relationship mm-hmm. now, but um, I don't act like I even am aware that it's there. I'm just smiling and having mm-hmm. a good time. And then as soon as he takes care of things, I'm there with a smile and appreciation and gratitude. And if I were in a situation where a man were to say to me, do you, do you want to split this? I would say, oh, so you'd like to be just friends. <laughs> oh my God, this is the best. I'm going to put it down. I'm going to go on a day just for that. <laughs> just, to like, <laughs> just to like test that. Oh, so you'd like to be just friends. Wow. And what That's would really he say good. to that? So the scenario would be like, he's like, oh, well, no, no, no. I'm just seeing if you want to split the check. Right. Well, I think it it invites him to show how he's going to show up, right? Mm. And and it was very glib the way I delivered it. I'm sure in the moment I might be like, oh, so you'd like to be just friends? You know, maybe I'd pose it as a question and not so just right. at them. Yeah. Or just be like, oh, sure, I always split with my friends. Is that what you want to be? And just let him see. Yeah. I'm, I've just, I've progressed, Anna. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can see. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's so powerful. All right. Well, we're going to finish off here on that note. So thank you so much, Shanna, Jeannie, and Nikki, <clears throat> for being here, for your energy and for your tips. And let's just finish off going real quick, one minute each, for all the women who are listening. And imagine these are women, you know, who are there where you have been before you've been through that process, women who are struggling with dating, like dating is a chore. Um, and you know they're just so frustrated and maybe going through that cycle and they don't know what they're doing wrong what's wrong with them um so what 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 would you tell them about dating or about anything that we've talked today i would say that dating does not have to be a chore dating should be your pleasure and it takes some work some internal work to get it to be in that place but you you if you work the program you can move from a place of seeking and chasing to choosing and that's really where it should be Hmm, beautiful yeah i love that and i would say um that it's not just about dating right dating can get so much better my dating life got so much better when I was in the program and growing through the program, but, you know, I noticed differences in the way I interact with now all the men in my life. I am so much more in receiving mode from all the men in my life. So even I had a contractor here the other day, he lives in my neighborhood. We're, we're friendly and he was doing some work at my house and he fixed a couple extra things, you know, and didn't charge me for them. He just wanted to help me. You know, he knows I'm, living in this house by myself. And I think he just wanted to be helpful. And I noticed that all the time now is like men want to give to me and it is, it feels so good. It just feels so good. And I just think it's because of the, the work, you know, it's not just about dating. It's about all the men, my brothers, my dad, my, Mm -hmm. you know, male friends, like, um, all of them. Yeah. Mm. Treat me differently now, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, beautiful. Nikki, what's what's your message? 
Um, my message would just be that, it, yes, dating does not have to be traumatic or hard. It's supposed to be fun. And for me, um, a lot of it has come from working on myself that I have found the shift in dating. But the biggest change would be this support group of women. I mean, in hearing other women's examples of how they might respond to something or how they might say something or seeing another woman struggle with the exact same thing that I struggled with makes me kind of a lot more open to growing and changing and seeing that like, okay, I'm not alone. I'm not the only one like me that has this problem. And these women are doing the work and I see them shifting and I'm reading their posts. So I think, you know, for me, it's this ability to have a group where nobody's telling me I have to move in a certain quickness or pace. I like the fact that I can move as slow as I need to. I can date, I can pull back from dating and work on myself again and then jump back into dating. There's no rules about where you've got to be to be, participate and to join in the conversation. And for me, that was a game changer. Mm. So beautiful. So again, ladies, claimed.com slash apply is where you apply for your own discovery call to see if claimed is going to be a good fit so you can change your and shift your dating reality so you can be like nikki Jeannie, and shannon you don't have to struggle and suffer all right ladies thank you so much for your presence i'm sure we'll see you inside on the inside and all of you have a beautiful <laughs> night i think for all of you it's night or maybe day yeah all right, all right. thank you night here thanks, thanks.